Are you ready for some sports? Maybe. Oh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Victor Allen's new new sports. Written and directed by the ball-headed black man, the one that the ladies had previously nicknamed Sexual Josh. Grab his head and make a wish. He wants you to be in that chat room dressed appropriately. Sports jaws, bras, and jock straps. That's for everybody. We want uniformity in our system. Be there. Be part of the world. Victor Allen. Now we get to keep it light because, to tell you the truth, I, I think everybody's like jumping into what they're going to do with the um, the politics mall. And I feel for some of you guys who did early voting and decided to get more information and said, "Oh, damn, I made the wrong choice." That's just that's just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. They're not changing that. <laughs> today, man. I'm just saying. I love the idea that everybody's going to vote. Well. I'm keeping it on sports where everybody tends to blame the athletes for not having what they call, you know, a brain above their shoulders. And it's envy, ignorance, and jealousy. But I always say, make your cheese, make your cheese. Okay, now, from the perspective of most of the time when I do sports, we're not coveting L.A. as much. We tend to do generally the U.S. But I had to say it's a bad day in L.A. because a couple of teams didn't fare so well, and I still think there's something to appreciate from it. Now, I'm not going to even ask you, Mario, did you watch it? I just know that I think the Lakers, for whatever reason, because there's this groundswell that always happens about the appropriate coach when they all of a sudden were there until the transformation of other individuals from an executive perspective and a player perspective comes on your team, and then all of a sudden you go, hey, look, we're going to sit back and work that Portland Trailblazer team like it's like no tomorrow and then we're going to come home and we're going to get like waxed, not even poetic, terribly by the Toronto Raptors. So I'm not trying to get into whether um, I'm abandoning the Lakers. I'm not. I'm always going, it's only 10 games in. But do you believe in hustle? Why do you believe in hustle? Do you think back to back days when you're playing a game? You work back to back 24. Are you anything less than where you were the day before? No, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and so, and I like the way the team is going. I like the direction of the team. And I think as part of that, you have moments that are bad. Right. All the teams do. I've been amazed at, at I've been sh- more than amazed, shocked at some of the upsets, some of whose schedules are great. Mm-hmm. Some of whose are not. You know, you got Denver here, but then you look at Houston and you go, wow. Right. So, but I'm convinced for all of those, stuff is not as bad as it seems, and also, it ain't as good as it seems either. So, no, I'm not worried at all about the Lakers. I'm not worried about all that. I think these are the kind of things that happen. These are the discussions. I think all along you have discussions about the direction of the team. I think that happens depend on, depending on the ownership all the time. So right. I think it's part of the process. So I'm not worried at all. No. What I will say is this. This is not the same Toronto team from last year. Now, I'm not measuring it based on, you know, not measuring it based on the Lakers because the team is still have to fight itself. I'm just saying this. This happened without Kawhi. Yeah, I mean, you know, it happens. (laughs) Did you see effort? I think this is where I say, this is why I said you have those moments. I said with all the teams that right. are across the board, the only right. fact it was such, so many, it's been so many upsets lately. I started thinking this way, right? What teams are showing the consistency? People and I said, right. Golden State and Denver. And then I started choking. And teams that, are struggling. Houston went through. Well, it. I said everybody else. And there's Pelicans only two are going teams. Through it. Right. Yeah, there's so, only two teams that are showing te- that kind of right. consistency. It's only, look, I'm first of all, I always believe the teams that have a synergy. Toronto has these players. They're okay, I would add them. I'm sorry, I would add them. You know, they're in the good. But it look off, look off you, Vic. In other words, you have to hey. scrape to think Milwaukee. who is the. Well, they were they were undefeated until they lost their first game. Like I said, I have them in that new group. Right. And again. 
this is to be determined, right? Right, because right. Because what you're looking at is headed toward, if you're thinking about playoffs, if you're really thinking about playoffs, too early, man. Then, then you really have a, a wholesale change in the landscape, right? right? Right. I mean, that's a big change in Absolutely, the landscape. Man. This would be more than one of the more dramatic years to me. Right. In, in terms of seeing a shift right. of who are the top teams. So if, if right. it plays out like this, Wow. I mean, Vic, it is a big I shift. I, look, I believe that sometimes you got to get away from those who are broadcasting. Now, somebody's going to say, does that include you? I say, absolutely. Never get away from <laughs> us. You're right. I'll <laughs> say, please, <laughs> don't go. No, that's us. I'm I'll part sleep of it. in the wet spot. I'm part of it. L- listen, let me give you my credentials. Mm-hmm. I have no one contacted me to give me the 411. I have no scouts. I have no insiders. I have no referrals. I am as guilty as a son of a bitch of having come to my own I thought that Shelly Shell was a scout. You mean for, you know, what? You know, following what? Oh, you mean sports. <laughs> you know, it's not. That's wrong, man. I'm telling yeah, you threw her under the bus. Okay. <laughs> she is a scout. Okay, let me just keep going. Let me, see, let me just say this. So this is just my opinion. And the first thing that happens is when, when the athletes look at stuff that wannabes like me and others do. They don't worry about what I say. I'm not even radar. But those that they respect, they tend to say you still got it wrong. So I'm going to say this. They got it wrong when they're trying to drum up this story about Luke Walton and Magic Johnson, right? As it pertains to it was a heated discussion, which heated discussions don't mean anything. You have them all the time, Mario. Don't you have them all the time with the ladies that you have a problem with? I have heated discussions. I have heated discussions with everybody but the cats. <laughs> see, see, that's what I'm saying. He don't scold the cat. <laughs> That's it. So, so when you look at this, I'm going. They just piss off. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. I think what they're saying is these teams that you're going up against who have already been together for a while, so what? Can you step it up a little bit more? Because their defense, I, I'm, after what I saw yesterday, these are young guys mostly. And what I saw was the Grand Canyon opening. So when Serge Ibaka <laughs> goes like, I outscored your whole team in the first quarter. And I just saw like, how can I say this? It, it was almost like, just open up down the court. Let me go in for layups and dunks. That is something that's missing. Now, that doesn't mean Luke's not right. But do you believe, do you believe that there should be an urgency for them to step up Luke is fine but do they need to have an urgency to step no, up no I think yesterday? they should just continue and I think you, the coach is going to handle it right there doesn't need to be any shift in policy okay. any shift in emphasis Got you. there doesn't need to be any kind of a shift or alarm of any kind to me right. yeah, I, I see it really as part of the journey of getting this team to where you go right. on the path to success, how many times are you expected to fall? So, no, Vic, I don't know. It doesn't mean any You're of that fine. to me. You're I'm doing fine well. with it. You're doing fine. I, yeah. I am too because I, I, I wait till after the All-Star game to say, okay, everybody. When is the All-Star game? Usually in February, maybe the beginning of February. Yeah, okay, maybe. wait for that. <laughs> okay. That's when I'll get a girlfriend. <laughs> All right. So don't panic, L.A., Lakers will be fine. It's not much expected. But those who picked them to win 50 games, I think you probably want to kind of rest that out. I gave LeBron and the new team plus 12 games above last year. 15, maybe 12. That puts them in around the mid-40s or plus more. All right. Let me get to the other team that eventually showed me something, but I always believe you have to. You have to step it up and see how well you grade your performance. And the Rams fall from the undefeated. I didn't expect them to be undefeated anyway, so I have no complaints Yeah, whatsoever. who expected that? <laughs> right, man, it's, it's just wrong, man. You know, I mean, look, it's, it looks good. It looks good. And then when you know that you're going against one of the masters. And so when I always go, more talent wins out when the new energy is coming along. But do you bet against Drew Brees, man. Do you better get It's hard that? to with all those records and the various types of records. Wow, I didn't even know, Big. Right. 
you know, all the records in terms of where Crazy. he sat. He, and so, still going. And, and I respect him based on his evenness, kind of. Right. So uh, he's consistent, small man in a big guy's world and does right. it. I, I'm, yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, look, the game was the game yesterday. A lot of people had already said, hey, look, it's a good chance that they would fall this game. I wasn't worried about that. It's how you play. Is there a hole? First of all, they're trying not to because they're, they're trying not to focus on Marcus Peters. He's he's a DB on the round. So you see the glaring lack of attention. Now, remember now, he came over having a history of having a great swag and defense in the secondary. But it seems he's distracted. Also, to live, to live, um, uh, is, is injured right now, and he's due to come back, which he's going to need a few games. That's not the issue. The issue is I still was impressed by what the Rams did because typically when you're down 35 to 14 and that far down, don't you turn over to the <laughs> red zone, NFL red zone, and go away from the game? Did you think at 35 to 14 in New Orleans with Drew Brees that it was going to be about a 50-point scoring fest? No, that's why I gave. That's why I said there's so much to take home from this, because that showed a bunch of comeback. Yes, it did. A bunch, which says a lot. It it, it, it did. Says a lot. I was impressed by the I idea was impressed. that I said, imagine how many holes the Rams gave up on what they call these plays that you do not let Drew Brees have those moments. So this is more to me about Drew Brees being the master. Jared Goff, he is a star. He's an upcoming star, but this is going to be his year of being tested because he has a year under his belt. He has a couple of years under his belt. So I wasn't mad to come back in this tied 35-35. That tells me they never give up. So if the Rams retain home field advantage, it may be a different team. Who's to say? But at 8-1, and one, I'll take it. No problem. But guess what it leads me to? This is where I can't wait because Mario has a, I'm going to give Mario a lotto ticket. And he's supposed to make a bet. And this bet is you have three quarterbacks. You have an average team. And you have one game. Which quarterback do you choose? One game, average team, one quarterback. Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, or Tom Brady. And you got a lotto ticket and he says, Hi, I'm making my bet. Who are you selecting, Mario? There's no wrong answer here. Probably Brady. You go Brady? By a hair. Okay. One game only. Not a season. Yeah, because I think even though they're all excellent, I think he has the edge and comeback wins right. under pressure. Even though Breeze has a bunch too, I just think he has an edge. Right. So in that, and I think both of those two have it over Aaron Rodgers, who still has plenty. Yes. See, these are all excellent, but I just think that Brady has the kind of – Edge, right? Yeah, and I've seen him work with lesser people. Well, all of, of them actually, right? And they all do that fairly well. It's a hair. This is a hair. Okay, who has the advantage of having the better coach right now? It's kind of a no-brainer. Brady, right? Who works? Then, then right? Then Peyton is second, right? And, and then Rogers. I don't get yeah, Rodgers. We all know. So who works with the least is Aaron Rodgers, right? Yes. He okay. definitely works with the least. Right. So if I frame this to who's the quarterback you would want working with the least, who would you take? Brady. Still take Brady. Yeah. I agree with you on the first choice, Tom Brady, when it was just without the least. On the second, I'll take Aaron Rodgers. I think we're, I mean, we're splitting hairs right now. Yeah, I mean, you gave some hard, these are some hard choices, and in some degrees it's not fair. I've always felt that Aaron Rodgers has had the worst team of all three. Right. Okay? Right. And, and, and the, 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 the same thing of the coaching, mm -hmm. the worst coaching, even though still better than average, just that Belichick is probably top. They and scheme. Peyton's in the second tier, who's very successful. Right. You know, or, you know, somewhere in the top tier, but toward, you know, behind Belichick because he's been consistent right. and through drought times. Right. So, yeah, though, no, these are all. It's just that I'm not 
for Aaron Rodgers, I always felt like he could. I just, I wish he would be traded to the Broncos. <laughs> Look at so you already wait a minute you already I t- wish wait a minute you do it you doing a wave to Green Bay saying y'all yes. need to let him go nah, he gave up his time <laughs> everybody gives Green Bay their time so you taking it from the NFC to the AFC I don't mm-hmm. care the Denver Broncos Denver Broncos okay all right I wish he would get out of Green Bay it is anybody rough. out there with me should should Aaron Rodgers get the hell out of Green Bay <sighs> yeah it's sad it's yes. sad. it is sad man everybody else should stay where they are. Brady should stay where he is. Brady should stay where he is. But Aaron Rodgers, get the hell out. Bail. <laughs> what you trying to – that's a legacy time. Bail. Way back in the 60s. Bail. Before. All right. Let me say this. Okay. Let me say this. All right. We got that. We cool. I, I'm splitting hairs. I'm going to leave it alone. I decided to go over and say, let me do my personal AFC top five ranking. And that only means including through the day, not what they could do down the road. What I have right now, Kansas City is my number one, Patriots two, Chargers three, Steelers four, Texans five. And in parentheses, Mario, is the differential plus minus. If you're minus, you know you're losing a lot of games because you have no defense. The plus is the difference with how you outscore teams. As you can see, Kansas City still leads in that category. So I went by, to me, this is the year of absolutely no badass defenses. It's like the year of offense. So I don't expect teams to step up and have the defenses they had last year. So who has the most prolific offense? I would say it's Kansas City, but I would say those who have the experience and the best scheming and coaching, I would say New England. The up-and-coming team that everybody just under the radar is the Chargers. Pittsburgh's found their ground. They, they, they're coming. And everybody says Houston, Texas, Deshaun, if he gets rid of the ball quickly, he will be like the Aaron Rodgers on steroids. Do not take that the wrong way. <laughs> that means. How do you know he ain't on steroids now? <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't Start take some it. shit. Don't talk. No, I'm just saying. Because they're all on steroids. He, I, because he will be the athletic version of Aaron Rodgers. I'd be on steroids. Yeah, and he hold, he holds the ball too long. Give me some now. He holds the ball too long. So any of any of these, you okay? If I'm leaving out somebody in your area, I agree with this ranking. Okay. I'm just curious why you left out the record of the Los Angeles Chargers. Everybody else, you got their record. Oh, up I'm there. sorry. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. Oh, okay. They're. I thought you tried to say something. No, 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 no. No, no, not I don't know. You trying to say something? <laughs> Come with something? You know? No, that's so a you, you same thing on the NFC. You don't show uh, Minnesota Vikings. I'm just yeah, trying. I can tell you where they're at yeah, right now. This... Barely about above five hundred. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. I agree with this ranking. Oh, okay. So you have no arguments? Nothing. Against... I agree with this ranking. Okay. The, I think the AFC is easier to pick. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I yeah. do, and I... I think I agree with everything. I agree with exactly what you have here. Yeah. Okay. In now the let's. Order. Let's go over to the NFC because it's a little bit harder. New Orleans Saints, because they won, and of course they toppled the undefeated, and right now basically go, well, hey, if it gets down to that we both have one loss at the end, they have the advantage because it's the win over the Rams. So I have to put them up there, although they tend to not have the defensive, uh, you know, that the Rams have shown up until this point collectively over the season so far. I got Carolina Panthers because Cam is coming. I mean, when I, what they're doing is I, he's there, and their team is there. They're at 6-2. and two. I know somebody's going to say, you got Chicago Bears fourth? I said they're leading their division. And who's behind them? Minnesota Vikings. And then you're going to say, where's Philly? Well, Philly is barely 500. And until they step up to show that they are now making an impact, I'm just going with how they're playing up until today. So there are some obvious teams I may have left out. Do you see any here that you like to replace or rearrange? Yeah, well, I agree with you essentially in this, except with one very major difference. I still put the Los Angeles Rams at the top. Okay. Even despite the loss to New Orleans. Okay. Especially considering the comeback. I think ultimately they proved to be a stronger team. Right. So I still have the Rams as number one, New Orleans as two, and the rest the same as you. Okay. It's just, it, I just, you know, even with a loss, I mean, I, I know I agree. you say because they beat you know me. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, I agree. I th- I'm, if you're if you're asking me who, 
I'm thinking it's going to evolve to be the better team at the end of the year. Then it, I still give the Rams right. a slight edge. Not right. a big, big edge, right. but a slight edge. I, I believe, of course, everybody knows that New Orleans is a dome team. Everybody knows that's their strict advantage. L.A. has proven to be very good and formidable uh, as an away team. They've gone to what they call the pits, where there's Seattle or, uh, playing there, going to New Orleans, and eventually have the neutral ground against Kansas City that's coming up shortly. So I agree. If I was projecting later, I would agree with you. But I don't want to have people go like this. Wait a minute. You know, look, what did you see yesterday? doesn't matter. Did they lose? Yes, they did. Don't give me the reasons why. So who's the better team between those two for today? But I agree with you as well, Mario, on that one. When you look at the totality and the depth of L.A., they're big. All right. And I'm not a Rams fan. Is there a team that you root for? Cleveland? Buffalo? No. I think – I'm not a fan. I tend to root more for Seattle. Okay. Uh, I tend to root for, tend to root for Carolina. Okay. Those are good choices. They're strong, 500 and above team. Yeah, I mean, basically for other reasons, kind of. Right. I That's what you. I would say. I tend to always root against New England and Dallas always root against them. Okay. So I, I I have very little concern over the AFC North. I could care less between Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Baltimore. Right. I could care less. I okay. could care less about the AFC South with the Texans, Titans, Jacksonville, and Indianapolis. Right. I tend to like Kansas City. I tend to like Denver. Tend. Right. Tend. Tend. I know. <laughs> and I tend to like Philadelphia Eagles, and I tend even to like the New York Giants. Yeah, and I think the toughest division that's showing now that they've stepped up because of what they're doing lately is the NFC South because you got New Orleans at the top. Carolina is coming hard. Atlanta but found – Tampa Bay. I'm shocked. Let me say this. See, this is where you get shocked. Let me say this. You can't. Once again, in shock. Okay. And let me just say this. Maybe a year, maybe two years, three years. But the organization is going to go like, we're getting worn out. Injuries are more on the defensive side than the offensive side. When are we going to step up and have a proficient offense? Pretty soon, you level off. And when those glaring weaknesses come against teams, even when they beat the Patriots, everybody said, oh, this is it. But they were be defeating a team that had injuries. So it was Any a, it given was, day and in a, in a moment you can have. They are. It's, I'm leaving that one alone. I'm going to leave it alone because they have to find their way. All right. What is 1968? I had said that probably earlier last month I was just going to make a reference to here and, and now 1968, the year that transformed the nation. And the reason why I'm saying that because it has everything to do with you. It's hard when you try to separate sports, but I believe 50 years ago, Something of what you're going through now may be reflective. And then you pick the story within it to sit back and bring out the subject of what happened. So I'm just going to read to you a couple of things that has occurred as it relates to what they call the U.S. most prolific and record-breaking team of the Summer Olympics. So while they were breaking records on the field, there were other things that's going along with what they call social injustice. Um, at the time here... The, the cloud of social change. It was only months after the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and protests against the Vietnam War were g gaining steam. In the lead up to the Olympics, John Smith and John Carlos, Tommy Smith and John uh, Carlos, organized the Olympic Project for Human Rights, a group that reflected their black pride and social consciousness. The group saw the Olympic Games as an opportunity to agitate for better treatment of black athletes and black people around the world. What you actually get to see is what has happened to that, up until that point. Their rewards is 50 years later. You get to see the symbolism here of the African American Museum of History and Culture at the Smithsonian. That being said, the question I said, do you know who Peter Norman was? Peter Norman. If you go down to the next or go to the next picture, Peter Norman is the name that's associated with the Australian sprinter standing in front of Tommy Smith. 
Norman was banned from future Australian Olympic participation. Smith and Carlos were ostracized by the U.S. sporting establishment and subjected to abuse and death threats. And having suffered along with her husband, in 1977, John Carlos' ex-wife committed suicide, which led to severe depression for Carlos. Norman died in 2006. Smith and Carlos were pallbearers. U.S. Track and Field Federation proclaimed October 9, 2006, the date of his funeral, as Peter Norman Day. It was Norman who suggested that Smith and Carlos share the black gloves used in their salute after Carlos left his pair in the Olympic Village. This is the reason for Smith raising his right fist while Carlos raised his left fist. So you're learning about a situation that even though it was planned, Norman was the one that said, whoa, because I was giving credit to, oh, I like that, the one glove rule. They came up uniquely, but that's Peter Norman. I didn't know any of that. Yeah, yeah I know. This it's blown, blows you away when you sit there and think that this sprinter, which I went to see the video of as they competed. He was fast. He went, I think he ran 20.1 in the 200 meters. But I wanted people to understand this is 50 years later and what they were subjected to and that it just wasn't, of course, um, Tommy Smith and John Carlos. If you want to see, I'm going to let you guys go and find out yourself. You know of Brent Musburger, broadcast journalist. I'll let you guys go search what his comments were at the time of what he thought Tommy Smith and John Carlos was doing. We always find that people all of a sudden in the moment and at the time tend not to ride the same bus that you're on. I'll leave that up to you guys. In the ongoing effort, the Arthur Ashe Award was eventually awarded to John, Tommy Smith and John Carlos. That is what 1968 represents. There will be more stories here, not just only the stories about African Americans. There will be more as I do this ongoing series. I want to give props to Peter Norman, rest in peace, peace, and he's been honored with his efforts, even though he never thought that that's how it would come out. So, hey, man, I'm out of here on my new, new sports, man. Wow, that's a good one. Victor Allen's new, new sports. Seeking to inform and entertain and Doing both in an excellent way. This is directed by the ball head of Black Man. You can watch it every week, a recurring segment of the Morning Coffee with Mario Show. Always part two of the Morning Coffee with Mario Show. There, y'all.